Hello everyone, my name is Dina Ata. I'm working as a petroleum engineer at Khalda Petroleum Company. I will be your moderator today for the session. I want to welcome all of you and Dr. Mohamed Gharib will be our presenter today. Dr. Mohamed Gharib uh, has a PhD degree in petroleum engineering with specialty in artificial lift and production engineering and operation. He is a member of petroleum engineering staff Future University in Egypt. Dr. Gharib is a technical and business professional with over uh, 34 years experience in oil and gas business, operation management, uh, engineering, sales, and teaching. Dr. Gharib was vice president, director, and general manager for different international service and operation companies. Over the past years, he also has played a major role in the practical training for the field staff and engineering in oil and gas production engineering and will operation for different major companies in MENA, in MENA region, USA, Canada, and the Far East. He was SPE Egyptian, Egyptian section president, program, and membership chairperson. He published and presented over 55 technical papers. He chaired several technical sessions for the local and international conferences and workshops. Dr. Gharib is a 2011 and 2020 recipient of the SPE Regional Technical Award in Production and Operation. Uh, we will have an amazing session today. I wish all of you to enjoy it. So uh, now, Dr. Mohammed, you can start, and the, the mic is yours. Thanks, Dina. Thanks, thanks a lot for these good introductions. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening for all of you. Uh, today, just uh, I'd like to give you some introduction about one of the very interesting subjects. Uh, it's a uh, saccharode bombing system, and the name a little bit changed uh, a while uh, from saccharode bombing system to reciprocating saccharode bombing system. This in order just to differentiate between the progressive cavity bomb uh, system and the, and, and the normal reciprocating saccharode. In the past, uh, since about more than 50 to, to 100 years, only is you have saccharode bombing system using the rod string. But recently, about 50 years or 60 more, the, the progressive cavity bombing system is using the same rod lift in order to differentiate, let us all of us just to start to talk about this type of system to name as reciprocating road lift system. Saccharod or reciprocating road lift system, it's one of the very old subject for lifting fluids from ground. You know, if you look to the picture in, in, in the right, uh, this is just a shadow system. It's the same concept, still the same of today for just as a most updated technology reciprocating road lift system it's using different type of, of system to activating the bump. Uh, today presentation will cover just in, in very brief, you know, in very brief, and maybe we have another sessions to go in details, you know. Uh, I will give you some little bit introductions and, and what are the main system components at the surface and downhole components will cover the whole completion for the road lift system, subsurface bomb, road string, and the surface equipment, like uh, the surface bombing units, uh, what's the prime movers running for that? Uh, what is the wheel heads of sucker road lo looks like? Uh, there is a very simple wheel heads, and currently there is a very complicated wheel heads using uh, Saudi Aramco and so on. And I give to you one or two slides about uh, analyzing the sucker road bombing system. What the technology techniques is used. And later on, we can go in details for each of that uh, component. You know. We talk in the introduction of the artificial lift system that there is different type of artificial lift. Either we are using formation pressure to assist uh, the fluid to reach to the surface with a, uh, a certain wall head pressure capable to move the fluids to the separators and mechanical assist, you know, mechanical assist, there is different types of mechanical assist. Today, our subject will be about road lift system or reciprocating sucker road lift system. This type of artificial lift using since more than 5,000, 7,000 years. Currently over 72 to 75% of the artificially lifted wells are using the sucker road bomb, the reciprocating road bombing system. It's not only just lifting the oils, it's also some, in some area, it can be used for gas wells. How can be used for gas wells? We can go in detail later on about this one, you know. 
what is the reciprocating, what is a sucker root bombing system or reciprocating bombing system? This is a picture for the whole system, you know, from surface to the downhole, you know. The sucker root bombing system, it is the most popular artificial lift method, the mechanical method, pure mechanical method, used worldwide, as I said, more than 75 to plus or minus. Uh, this number of the well are using road lift system to lift from one barrel per day up to over 6,000 barrel per day, you know. It's just using what we got, using a surface bombing unit just uh, to convert a rotary motion of a prime movers, can be electric motor, can be diesel engine, can be gas engine, whatever source of rotary, rotary here is through the beam bombing system is just convert to reciprocating and reciprocating bombing action is just required to activate it, the downhole pumps through a mechanical links called the road string. Okay. What are, you know, the application of this? As I said, you know, more than 75% of the wells worldwide are using this type of, of wells. Why and uh, why we suck a road and, and what type of application we can use the reciprocating road lift system? First of all, the sucker road or reciprocating lifting system can be used for all the fuel or fluid condition. Sandy wells, if the well produce a very high percentage of sand, for sure there is a problem. Sand is a problem for all mechanical, for all artificial lift types. But how you can handle sand, sucker road currently can handle a certain percentage of sand, you know, there is a well in Oman, for example, you know, if you stop the well for a, for an hour or less than an hour, you can have one, two joint over the, the bump full of sand, you know, gassy wells. You, you can use a road lift system for very high gas or issue wells. In the old books, they said struck a road for liquid, for dead oil, for liquid, but currently there is a multi-phase downhole pumps, then road lift system can use for gassy wells. It's used for all type of, of crude oils as heavy, medium. It's living world with more than 50 APIs, you know. And also, you know, this, this type of artificial lift is a mechanical, completely mechanical. Then it's not affecting too much with the pumping pressure or the bottom wall flow pressure. It's kind of working if the fluid level at the pump. If only you have a fluid here. Uh, this slide just uh, can summarize for you what is a typical application for the road lift system and so on, you know. Road lift system can use for all type of wells, whatever the percentage of sands can be used. For sure there is a problem, you know, and there is a special design, special uh, downhole configuration for the sand. Sand is a problem for all types of artificial lifts, especially mechanical types. Uh, road lift system can use for very high gas or ratio wells. Currently, as I said, you know, there is some wells using, uh, gas wells using road lift system to uh, dewatering the, the wells and so on due to the new technology and new configuration and downhole bumps, what we call the variable slippage bump or just multi-phase bump. And also this type of artificial lift can be lifted the type of fluids, whatever it's uh, ABI gravity lifts from 8, 10 up to more than 50 ABIs and so on. Also, uh, since it's a completely mechanical and it's a positive displacement, it's not if the bottom hole flow pressure is not affecting too much in the volume of production. However, since you have a fluid covering the bump or just enter the bump, the bump can produce from fluid up to the bump depth from the bump dips up to the surface and so on. This type of artificial lift can be used a very wide range of production from one barrel per day up to more than 6,000 barrel per day. Also, due to the new technology and so on, this type of wells can be used for all well geometry, for all well trajectories, you know, vertical wells, or horizontal wells, slant wells, deviated wells, for sure, each type of, of of, of problem or well condition, it's required a special design in, in downhole condition, you know. It's used for steam injections, you know, if, if you will under steam injection or just uh, steam flooding or just SAG-D, whatever, 
this type of artificial lift, it can be used easy and it can be handled all the type of words. And as you know, just this table, just to summarize for you, the application range, for example, you can use from up to 16,000 there is a wells in different area using up to more than 17,000 barrel per day, um, 6,000 barrel per day, and so on. Even for the temperatures, you can use up to 550 degree Fahrenheit and more. And all this is just type of, of application for road application for that. But why there are more than 75 percent of the world using road lift system, you know, and so on. Why the people start to use more and more road lift system? According to the most of publication, most of the studies, they said, if you are studying and screening, selecting the artificial lift for your wells, and you found the reciprocating sucker road bombing system can work, use that system. Why? Because they have a very high system efficiency. The losses in power between the input power to the system and the output power to the lifting of fluid you are lifting, it's, it's, it's not too much, you know. It's come after the progressive cavity. The second type of artificial lift just can be have low losses in the power between. All the optimization control, it's available. You can optimize the system from the surface to control the downhole equipment, and the surface equipment. If you design the system to produce, for example, a 1,000, 2,000 barrel per day and due to a depletion in the reservoir, the production is dropped and the fluid level dropped to more pressure, dropped to, and, and production dropped to about 20, 50, 100 barrel per day. Using this optimization, you can adapt using the same system to have the same production. Positive displacement, for that reason I said, you know, you can displace up to fluid level up to the pump dips and also you can create a very high pressures at the wells, you know, because it's positive displacement. We'll show, I will show you later on in, in how the bomb, downhole bomb running to understand what's mean positive displacement. If you have a problem with the material, you design the bomb initially, especially downhole condition for, for sweet condition, sweet crude oil, there is no, there is no, there is no CO2. And with the time you found this problem start to be appears, you can change the downhole condition material and so on. As you have a very high flexibility to change the bumping parameters based on the bottom hole condition. Very high salvage value because majority of the wells uh, cost in the surface equipment. 75% of the artificial lift cost as a road lift system is in the surface equipment. Then they have a very high salvage value and, and so on. For sure, like all the other artificial lifts, they have some limitation. One of these limitation, I said before, one of the application, it can be used for a deviated well, for horizontal well. But even if we are using for that, the running life, the mean time between failures will be, it's not, not high, you know. Then there is a, a very, there is a potential of tubing and road wear. Then design, you need to have a special design, special roads, special downhole configuration in order to match special bumping parameters and so on, you know. Gazy walls, yes, there is a problem for gazy walls for all artificial lift. If you have a gas, the volumetric efficiency will reduce. But this type can be produced a very high gas or issue walls. And you can add, you can improve your downhole volumetric efficiency. Is the depth limited? For sure, it can use to 16,000, 17,000 feet. But with increasing the depth, the load over the road strain and the bump will increase. Then the capability of the production will decrease. Then the amount of loads you are able to produce will decrease. For example, you can produce 7,000 barrel per day, but this from depths about uh, 700 feet, 800 feet, 1,000 feet maximum. But from 17,000 feet, you cannot produce more than 100 barrel per day and so on. You cannot use an area while the people it's living or just in, like offshore area. They have some environmental effects and some environmental problems and, and so on. What are the system components? The previous slides are just introduction. What are the main system components? Let us just to divide it to surface equipment and downhole equipment, you know. If we are look to downhole equipment, the first downhole equipment, the first part, let me just give you some hint about it's the second road well completion. 
what I need to consider in the well completion for the road lift system. The well completion for the road lift system is one of the simplest well completions, you know. And only just you need to have some of, of this or just maybe all of that. You need to have a, a production tubing and production tubing can be the tubing or some people can use a casing, can use in, in hanging the pump inside the casing and, and you can produce, no problem, you know, with a special downhole configuration. But if you use tubing and so you need a sitting nibble, you need to set the pump in a certain sitting nibble. Plus for a certain type of well, uh, when you are the depth increasing more than 3,000 feet, 4,000 feet, there's a tendency of the tubing movement with the bump reciprocating then we will require what you call tubing anchor catchers. And so on, just to eliminate the tubing movement. And so on. Plus the well head of the sucker road and so on. In a very simple way, you know, if we assume this is a casing and this is the formation, you know, we need just to run the tubing. And with the tubing for shallow wells, you need only to have the sitting in. This is a very simple completion for the road lift system for well produced from 3,000 feet and, and, and shallow than that, and so on. This is the only one. And then you, you can run the bump. This is a downhole bump. You run the bump over the road strain and sit inside sitting. This is a very simple completion for the road lift system. What else? But remember, you know, this second road is moving up and down. While we are moving up, this is a road strain and this is a tubing. This road strain and this is a tubing. This is a bump, and this is what you call traveling valve. This is standing valve. While we are going up in that case, one of that valve, what we call traveling valve, is closed. Then you're lifting the, the weight of the fluids. What is lifting the traveling valve with the plunger is a road strain. Then all the weight of the fluids will be on the road strain, and the road strain will be under tension but there is will be no load, weight, fluid load on the, on the tubing itself. Then the tubing is contracted. You have this shape of, you know, packing of the tubing. In the downstroke, this is valve is open and all the weight transferred to the standing valve, which is connecting to the tubing. And then the fluid load transferred to the tubing. This is the tubing, it's expansion. Then you have tubing movement with each stroke. In that case, you know, you need to have what you call tubing anchor catcher just to fix the tubing with the casing in order to prevent the tubing movement while the bumping cycles. Then you need to have, in the previous slides, we say I need to have tubing blast sitting nibble. Here with the wells producing from 3,000 feet, some people use 4,000 feet or 2,000 feet, depend on the bump size and, and some other condition. You need to use what you call tubing anchor catcher. Tubing anchor catcher is used just to eliminate tubing movement. Eliminate tubing movement just to, to eliminate, the, 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 uh, to reduce tubing wears and reduce coupling of saccharoid wears. And even uh, the, the tubing coupling can be connect, connected and we have some friction with the casing and this, this can be have another uh, problems. And this is, will be the, the other very simple. Then two simple completion for road lifts. For sure, there is some complicated completions and uh, some other requirement completion, like what we are using in, 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 in Algeria and some other area in Saudi Arabia and some other area. They are using a downhole sensor with the bombs, they are using a downhole, uh, um, uh, what you call uh, injection fluid injection just to, to melt some salt and to reduce the salinity. Uh, if you need the downhole monitoring, a, a lot of things, you know. Sometimes you need, you need to reduce from two different zones and you need to separate the two zones. You need to run the, the, the two backers and so on. But however, the majority, more than 85% of the world worldwide using the two type of completion, what I presented before. What are the heart of the road lift system? It is the second, the second road down more pumps. The downhole pumps, all the people name, it is the heart of the bombing system. All the system used and designed to operate this downhole pump. If you operate this downhole pump in a good efficiency, then you have, you will have a very good efficiency for the total system, you know. It's just a, a, some a symbols 
as symbols of, of small pieces, small parts, you know, and can connecting together and just what we call complete and to complete a downhole bumps. Let me show you later on what this is these two parts connecting and, and the downhole bumps composed of. What are the functions of downhole bumps? I said before in the introduction of artificial lift, the function for any downhole bumps. Any downhole bumps is, is a two main function. First of all, the downhole bump should be decrease the bottom hole flow pressure against the formation. Why you need to decrease that in order to allow the formation to produce or to give to you the desired is a design or desired production you want from the formation. Meanwhile, after you are reducing this pressure, you need to lift it to the surface. How you need to lift the surface? This, this pump should be increasing the pressure again, the discharge pressure after the pump in order to allow to lift the fluid to the surface and just with the wellhead pressure and overcomes pressure loss with the wellhead pressure capable to produce, to, to move this fluid to the nearest separator or, or the tank and so on. How the downhole bump is running and how it is working. As a bump cycle, we have two cycles for the bump. When the bump is going up, when the pumping unit is going up like this, we call it upstroke pumping unit. When it starts going down, we need this downstroke pumping unit. What's going on in the upstroke pumping unit? The downhole bumps have two main valves. This non-return valve, it check valves open in one direction, open from bottom to the top, and open by delta B. You need a delta B across the bump to open the valve. And the change when the fluid direction, close when the fluid direction is changed. Then this is standing valve, this is traveling valve, the red one, this is the plunger, and this is the road strain, this is the tubing. Also. While we are going in the upstroke, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, plunger and the valve, Traveling valve, when you start to go up in the upstroke, it starts to go against the flow. Then all the flow pressure above the bump will be over this valve and will close that valve. Then when you start to go up like this, what will happen? This valve will be closed. Since this valve will be closed, all the flow pressure above the traveling valve or this valve will be isolated from the standing valve. Then will be no pressure in the top of the standing valve. What will happen? Below the standing valve is a formation pressure. It's a bottom hole pressure, the low pressure. Then this pressure will open the, the, travel, the standing valve. Because here the pressure is very low, there is no pressure. Then will be opened. While we are going up, this is traveling valve is going and displace all the float above the traveling valve in the plunger to inside the tube. Meanwhile, this is the area will be just vacant area. Then traveling standing valve will open. The fluid from the formation start to fill this traveling valve until we reach to the end of the upstroke. Then will be if you have enough flow to, to fill that, you know, in ideal case, in ideal condition. Then the fluid below the valve came from the formation. This is a blue one, and this will be completely full with a new fluid. What happened in the downstroke? Then you are reached to upstroke, you are reached to here, and you have new fluid in this area. From here to here is a new fluid. When you start to go down, the bumping units going down, it's called downstroke. What will happen here? This flow is going down. The, the, this is a fluid. The, 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 the direction of the fluid will be changed and affecting on that pole. Then this pole will be closed. When this is traveling valve start to move down, will move against closed area. This is fluid, incompressible. Even if you have gas, you have some compressibility of gas, this valve can be a little bit closed until reach to a certain pressure. And this valve go down until creating pressure below that valve in this area will be higher than the hydrostatic head of the fluid column from the bump to the surface, plus wall head pressure, plus pressure loss. At that condition, this valve, what you call this a pole of sheet of this valve, in this shape, this valve will be open and start to displace the new fluid what we are creating in the up flow to be moved to the up above the uh, traveling valve until you reach to the end of the bottom of stroke. Then all the fluid what you already produced in the 
upstroke, you already transfer to the downstroke, and the cycle starts to repeat it again, up and down, up and down, up and down. This one cycle, up and down, called one stroke. The units can be around 10 strokes per minute, then 10 cycle, you know, up and down, one cycle, 10 times up and down, up and down, like this. It's called the one stroke. The, the number of stroke is a function of how much production I need from this uh, way, and, and so on. Generally speaking, you know, just uh, since I said that the road lift system now is using for different type of fluid, for different type of condition, can be used for sand, uh, high volume, low volume, and so on. Then in the market, there is different configuration of the bump. ABI start to dif differentiate it between the bump. The main two categories, ABI divided the downhole bumps to two main categories. One is called tubing bump. Tubing bump, that's mean. A part of the tubing is a part of a part of the bump is run as a part of the tube. This is a part of the bump, what you call bump barrels outside diameter. It's run connecting to the tubing as a part of the tube, and the rest will run on the road string. The other configuration is the insert bump. Insert bump that means the whole type of bump is run inside the tube. Not only that, you know, because also as I said, you know. The road lift system is a forgiven system. It's have a lot of technology used for a variety of different condition, different fluid condition, and so on. And even for each type of this category, there is a subcategories. The first subcategory and main purpose used, you know, and, and, and the majority of the people use what we call insert road pump. Insert road pump, that's mean the whole pump, it's run inside the tubing. If you have this the tubing, remember the, the, the compression, I said they have a tubing and they have a setting nib. Assume this is the tubing you have and what's mean of insert pump? Insert pump, that's mean the whole pump, whole type, the whole complete set of pump connecting to the road string and run inside the tubing, like this. This is a tubing, you know, the tubing, the setting nib. It's insert pump, that's mean this is, can be go inside this one, this plunger uh, configuration will be inside this bump and just connecting to the road string and the whole bump connecting to the road string and run inside it. Not only that, you know, just even for this condition and for insert bump, it's not only have, just we can say insert bump and so Insert bump is there is different type of pressures, different type of accumulation sand and so, different type of condition, even the manufacturing, the API manufacturing, the, the, the insert bump to different condition. For example, what's mean they are manufacturing insert bump for different condition? I will I will explain the difference between both of them. Even for insert pump, you know, according to the pump, where is hanging the pump? Is the pump the whole pump bus from the sitting nibble, or the whole pump can reach to the sitting nibble and the complete pump? can be set above the setting nibble. In that case, the APIs or just the manufacturing defines the pump to two type of pump. One of them called top anchor pump. Top anchor pump, what mean? The pump is connecting from its top. See the red point? This is the anchor the assembly of the pump. And all the blue pump is a pump. If this one connecting at the top of the pump, then the whole pump, it's passing from the setting nibble and only just the cage of the bump can be in the top. But the other configuration of the insert bump, the ABI is found. This is a sitting assembly of the bump and so on. The other type is what's called bottom anchor bump. This is sitting assembly, this type, this sitting assembly here in the bottom, here in the bottom. What's the difference between them? And why you have top and bottom anchor bump? For example, if I have a sand and I'm producing the well with some sand and so on, Remember, you know, the road lift system sometimes can be reduced 100 barrel, 200 barrel, 50 barrel. Then the fluid velocity of the, the velocity of the fluid is low. Then the sand carrying capacity will be low. And suppose sometimes the will stop for any reason to do some maintenance and so on. Then the sand can settle between the bump barrels and the, the tubing. If the bump start to settle here, the bump can become stuck and you're not able to use then. If you have some sand and some tendency, this type of bottom anchor pump 
it's not preferred, it's not recommended. It's recommended to top anchor bump. Someone can say, okay, since the bottom anchor bump is good for that, why are not used only top anchor bump, top anchor bump for all wells? No, because top anchor bump also have some other problem. The whole bump should be passed from sitting nipple. Then the bump size here inside the seam tubing will be less than the bump sizes. Not only that, remember in the downstroke, the traveling valve in order to open, the pressure below the traveling valve should be higher than the whole hydrostatic head plus the well head pressure. But the pressure outside the bump here is low. Then the pressure here is low, the pressure here is high. Then the inside pressure inside the bump will be very high. The, the bump can be have some ballooning effect and even the barrel can be broken, can have some pressure. But here in the downstroke, the pressure outside will be like the pressure inside and so on. Tubing bump, for the tubing bump, it's a little bit different than the insert road bump, you know. As I said, the tubing bump, part of the tubing is, is, is a part of the bump is a tubing. These are bump barrels, you know, and this is a sitting nipple. And this sitting nipple and this is a bump barrel. And these are plungers, you know. For tubing bump, you run this with the tubing as a, piece, as a part of the tube. Then you run the standing valve or just the sitting assembly, either separate like this or connecting with a plunger and run with the plungers here. And after that, you can set in the loop. This is a plunger assembly connecting to this one. This is the difference between the tubing bump and the insert. What are the main components of the bump? Then we say, say the bump is the heart of the system. Whatever type of bump you have, insert bump, top anchor, bottom anchor, tubing bump, whatever type of bump, all the bump must have five main basic parts, plus some other connection. And if you look to this bump, if you count the, the count the connection of the bump, you found almost 22 pieces of the bump. But 22 pieces like a knot and, 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 and some other connection. But the, five, the other heart of the system, the main part, it's only five. First one is the barrel, the housing of the bump, is the barrel of the bump. Second part is the plunger. The plunger is a sealing element, which is moving inside the bar, which is a seal the float from the top to the bottom. It's not allowed the fluid what you are producing in the upstroke to back, to bypass the bump and to back again. Plus two valves, all bumps have two valves. These two valves, it's traveling valve and standing valve. All two valves have these two configuration, pole and seat, one unretained valve. Check valve, open from bottom to the top, open by delta, T, delta B. Plus the sitting assembly, you know, where is you are set the bump? At what place you are set the bump? It's in the bottom or in the top? In the market, there is different type of sitting assembly. There is a cup types, plastic types, or also there is a mechanical types. There is depend on the well, config, well condition. These cups can be in the bottom, these cups can be in the top, and, and so on. Plus, one of the main advantage of the road lift system, even if you not have the sitting nibble in the well and you have a temporary uh, well completion and you need to run the bump at a certain depth, there is what we call insert pump anchor. This pump anchor, you can connect to the bottom of the bump, you can remove this is sitting assembly and connect to the bottom of the bump. And you can run inside your tubing and you can set the bump at any depth of the tube. For example, if you have a flowing wells and flowing wells cease to flow and there is no work over available and you want to, 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 to produce this well, you can reduce this well using road lift system by using insert road bump. If you have a tubing leak in some area and so on, there's different application for that one. When we start to go in details for road lift system class, we can explain this more and so on. Okay, this is just as a road lift system. Generally speaking, in, in a very brief way, you know, the API, even since we have variety of bump, different type of bump, top down, top down, bottom down, insert bump, uh, tubing bump, you know, uh, mechanical anchor, uh, uh, mechanical cup types, and so on. The API said, okay, let us have one configuration, one designation, then all the people worldwide can talk the same line. Since the API, configure the bump and define the bump with a certain configuration. It's very important for each one work in this area to know that. You, know. you define the bump in, at what tubing size you need to run the bump. This is the first two digits indicating the tubing size. For example, 
if I have two and half, uh, 278 tubing size, then the first two digits to designate it, to define the bump will be 25. That means this bump will run in 278-inch tubing. If you have this tubing, then the bump size, the three more digits after that is referred to what bump size, what the poor bump size here, I need, it should be run here. If you have a smaller bump, you cannot have a smaller tubing, you cannot run with a bigger bump, maybe not pass inside the tubing. The first two digits give you what is inside the inventor of the tubing, second two digits you say this is, can be run here on that. This can be yes, this can be a road bump, can be a tubing bump, and what size of, of the bump. Plus this bump can be a road bump or tubing bump, a road bump, two tubing bump. Plus if you see the tubing and road bump, the barrel, the barrel, it's just to withstand the pressure inside. Is the barrel thickness, the wall thickness is the barrel. It's high, heavy, or, or thin, is wall, and so on. It's a bump connecting from top or the bottom. Remember, we say you have top anchor <coughs> and bottom anchor of the bump, and, and so on. You know. The barrel length, the barrel length, how much far are you going in the upstroke? When you're going in the upstroke, you need to have a barrel length accumulated, can be accumulated this stroke length, and stroke length is the one of the main parameters required and used to calculate the production with, with, the, uh, with the speed, the bumping speed. What is the plunger length? This is the length of the plunger, is a ceiling element. What is the length? Sometimes there is some two connection at the top or the bottom of the bump called uh, the bump connection. Let me give you an example to be a little bit clear on that, you know. The ABI, if the ABI says, okay, I have uh, a bump, 25, 150, RH, PC, 12, 5, 3, 4. And this is my down bumps, and this is my tubing. 25 means this is tubing size is 278 tubing size. 150, if you put a point here, that means that my pump size, plunger size, or inside the emitters of this bump, it's 1.5 inches. And when you start to calculate your production, then you have now here's plunger size, have stroke length, stroke per minute. What this type of bump? If you look to this type of bump, all the bump is outside the tubing. This R, it's mean insert pump or road pump. R, insert pump or road pump. What else I have here, you know? The barrels, thickness of the barrels. These barrels, you know, this is thin wall barrel, this is the heavy wall barrels. These barrels, the thickness of these barrels, you know, it's heavy wall have in order to withstand high pressures, you know, the design is required, this one. You know. This bump is a bottom anchor, see? It's bottom anchor, you know, this is the anchor of the bump sitting assembly of the bump connecting from the bottom. Then this bump is bottom anchor bump. Cup types, you may see here, it's cup types, it's not a mechanical. This is a plastic cup type, easy to unseat and set this one. This barrel lens from here to here is 12 feet. This 12, it means the barrel length is 12 feet. Then five feet, what's the five feet? Is a plunger lens. This plunger lens is five feet. So plunger lens depends on how much delta P across the plunger. If I, I run a plunger in deep wells, for sure I need longer plunger to withstand more pressure across the plunger. If I run in deep shallow wells, maybe I need one feet plungers, two feet plungers sometimes, if I run in deep wells, I need seven feet plunger, eight feet plungers, and so on. Three feet, that means this up extension, the upper extension, upper connection in the tubing is three feet. Two feet is a lower extension, the tubing is two feet. And this just, you know, each one is, should be known that this is ABI configuration, ABI designation of the bump. But remember, this is about bump configuration and size. Nothing here about bump metallurgy. Yes, because I know, I hear from some people, they say, okay, I need an AB, ABI bump, 25, 150 RHPC, and so on, ABI, and it can be run for all the way. No, depend on downhole condition, your sour condition, your well fluid condition, you need to change after you designate the bump. This bump configuration is related to the bump size and how you run the bump and how, how much production you need from this bump. But metallurgy, what type of condition this bump we run, you need to change each type of piece of the bump, metallurgy. 
and so on. This is three feet top and this is three feet bottom. The other part in, in, in downhole equipment, what you call sucker road strings of the ball. What is sucker road string? The road string, it's a mechanical link connecting the down, this is downhole bumps. And this my service equipment. I say downhole bumps in order to run, it should be reciprocating up and down. It receives the reciprocation up and down from the bumping units, it's going up and down. But what is connecting this reciprocating transfer, the reciprocating motion from top to the bottom of the bump, it's what you call the sucker road, the road string. Sucker road, the road string, it's just, there is different type, different configuration. This is the simplest way, the more common, common configuration of road string is used worldwide. I will show you on the next slide what's the difference between this and me. Since the road string is connecting the pound to the surface equipment, then in the upstroke, the road string, it's, it's just lifting its own weight, plus the weight of the road fluid connecting to the top of the traveling valve. Then road string going up and down. One of the many critical important parameters in the sucker road configuration. It's, it's subject to cyclic load. In the upstroke, is lifting its weight plus the weight in the downstroke. In the downstroke, there is no weight flow. Then you're lifting only its own weight. Then the road string is subject to different load in upstroke and downstroke. If you are remembers, if you are just uh, very simple calculation, this system is running with 10 stroke per minute. Then this road is going 10 times up and down with different load and upstroke and downstroke per minute. That's mean 14,400 times per day with different loads. Then we need to select this is a very critical, very careful road string. You know, what type of corrosion environment you select the size and you have a corrosion environment, you have some pitting, some cracker would to reduce the tubing cycle and so on. What size of coupling? This coupling, this uh, coupling connecting joint to the other. What size of coupling here, you know? Because the coupling, the fluid will pass between coupling and the tubing. And if this is area is small, especially for heavy crude oil, this will be a very high pressure loss in this area and so on. What type of rope string, you know? There is different type of rope string, all old, old since about 200 years or more. There's only wooden road string. With the new technologies, road string manufacturing and the requirement for produce deep wells, heavy wells, and, and uh, uh, high volume wells. So in the market, they will find they are introduced many types of road string. But however, the main common road string is this one, what we call jointly saccharoid, jointed saccharoid. Saccharoid is about pieces and joints. You can connect them as a whole side to each piece and joint. First one is a special steel conventional saccharoid. Special conventional steel saccharoid. Plus there is a hollow saccharoid. Saccharoid, this saccharoid is just a solid bar. The normal saccharoid is a solid bar. But there is a, for a special application, small application, this can be a hollow saccharoid, but this will be very limited load. Plus some people start to introduce what we call fiberglass saccharoid. The body of saccharoid is fiberglass. Remember, you know, just I said the capability of the road uh, lift system to produce high volume from deep wells is will be low. Why? Because with, when we are going deep, you need to lift weight flow plus weight of the road string. Because when we are going deep, the weight of the road string is increased. Then manufacturing starts to introduce something light, like fiberglass. But however, each one of them have some advantage and disadvantage. One of the main disadvantage of the fiberglass is the temperature, is the elasticity. If it's broken for the fishing operation, it's not an easy answer. And currently, really, in, in the market, there is a very good type of road string, what we call it's continuous sucker road string. Instead to use a jointly sucker road string can be about 25 feet, 30 feet, and so on like that. No, they are using one piece of sucker road from top of the well to the bottom of the well came in this reel like that's called continuous sucker road, which allow all the operators can be run sucker road for horizontal holes, can run the bump in horizontal way. It's allow also the operators to run the sucker road for very high deviated wells and so on. Then 
this is just the main component of saccharose. Then when we start to talk about saccharose string, that means the road from the bottom of the, at the bump to the bumping unit to the surface. All this is called saccharose string. What are the main components of the saccharose string? Either you need to have connection of this or this or that, or, or just a continuous saccharose, plus coupling if you are using a connecting saccharose, plus you need to have pony road, pony road, just a small saccharose like a bump joint in, in, in the tubing and sort of connect the, 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 the final length of the saccharose, plus at the top of the road string, you need to have a polished road. Polished roads connecting the saccharose, whatever you have down all this or this or that, to the bumping units, which is a part of the polished road, go up out of the well and in of the well. And there is a rubber, what you, rubber a connection called stubbing box is just uh, connecting to the polished road to allow the fluids not to go up. Then the main component of the road steering from bottom to the top or from top to the bottom can be polished road, pony road, and this is the main road connection plus the coupling and so on. If we start to talk about steel, the main common more than currently 70% of the oil <coughs> using saccharose, the main common saccharose is a steel. Common two different lengths, you know, either 25 feet or 40 feet plus, you know, if, if you are counted for the coupling and so on. It's available 25 or 30 feet. It's just uh, the, the two end of this saccharose is a male male and the coupling, you can connect in coupling female and female the coupling. Diameter of saccharose, it's, there is an API standard for saccharose. It's starting from five over eight of inches up to one and a half of inches with an incremental of one over eight of inches. For example, after five over eight of inches, if you add one over eight of inches will be six over eight of inches, that means three quarter of inches. And if you added one over eight of inches to the three quarter, you will have seven eight of inches. You are eight over eight of inches, and so on. Plus, the bony road is just a second road is with a small length. Length it can be two feet, four feet, six feet. According to the ABI there is standards for second road, there is three main ABI grades. Grades that mean how much load, how much tensile strains this second road can be with a stand and so on. According to the ABI, there is grade C, grade K, and grade D. Plus, you have high tensile strength saccharose is not ABI, because the ABI saccharose have a limited capability to run a certain load overloads. But sometimes, you know, you have a heavy weight, heavy loads, deep walls. What you need to do? The, the manufacturing start to manufacturing a saccharose was more capability, more capacity than this. It's for sure, it's more expensive. It's sensitive to handling because the hardness will be very high and so on. And sometimes, you know, it, it, it's creating a big problem in handling in the field, even if one would use saccharose came in this bundle, in the shape of that type of bundle and so on. The second type, the new technology of, of the road string, really it's called what you call continuous saccharose. If you look to this one, this is a jointly connecting saccharose, what just, just I, I explain, you know, this saccharose joint, saccharose joint connecting together with a jointly. In order to bend saccharose in this area will be a very hard, because saccharose will be a little bit stiff. Plus the coupling outside the enter, it's high. Then you're creating here what you call a very high friction loss, side loads in the tubing. Then you have friction, very high side load between the tubing and the coupling here. Then this will be a very high wear tendency here. You know. But if you look to this a continuous saccharose, saccharose continues like this, coming in just one piece, a little bit flexible, then all the weights is just distributed in the low side areas. And if you have, for example, side load here, 50 pound, then 50 pound will be distributed for the coupling length, about four inches. But here, 50 pound will distribute it over the whole joint if you have the bending area about, for example, 10 feet, 15 feet, then the side load here for each point will be much, much less. Not only, if you look to the, this is a standard sucker road, the flow resistance of flow to pass between the coupling and the annulus clear area between the couplings and the tubing will be very low. There will be a very high 
crucial loss and creating also piston effect even here, you know. But for continuous saccharose, there is no coupling, only one, it's one joint connected from top up to the bottom. But one of the main problems for this one, it's required a special link to run this, and this is not available in all the area, you know. The handling is, uh, and transportation is a little bit expensive. But for horizontal wear, for deep walls, uh, for some other special application, it's proof to be a very good type of road and so on. Since we said the second road is just used only at the mechanical lens from top to the bottom, then nothing it's else I need from second road, especially for a sprocketing road lift. And it's lifting its own weight. Then why I use one size of second road from top to the bottom? The top part of second road is lifting all the weight of second road below it, plus the weight of the floor. But the bottom part of second road is lifting only the weight of the floor. Then why I use bigger size of second road for all size? Then the, the API starts to say, okay, let us to design, especially for deep wells, second road, what we call tapered, sorry, tapered type road string. Tapered type road string, that's me. I use a bigger road string in the top and smaller road string in the bottom, but should be distributed smoothly. You know, I can use one size and the second size should be exactly less than the one in the top was one over eight inches. Remember I said that the second road changed from one size to one size was incremental of one over eight inches. That mean the one inch is over, it's, uh, it's about eight over eight. And seven eight inches is seven over eight. Three quarter inches is six over eight. In order to have a tapered road string like this uh, and design, there is a special design uh, formula I can use like this, this special software like uh, S-Road and Roadstar and some other roads, Q-Roads and so on, you can use to, to define what configuration of this need to use. If it is ABI, the, the stresses, you know, at each top of, 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 of this is uh, road, different road size should be equal. What does that mean? If I start to load this road, this one inch road, grade C was about 85% each maximum capacity, then I start to go with, like this until we reach to the point here, change to seven, eight over eight inches with 85 each of its maximum capacity. Then the top part of this size equal uh, or just expecting or just uh, uh, have a road stress the same like the top part of this one, like the top part of this. In this case, we call it ABI road string. And the ABI road string defined with the top one and the bottom one. For example, like, like the road lift, if you see the road lift, the downhill bumps, you see the ABI defined with a certain configuration. For the also the table road strings, ABI defined was two main numbers. You said, I have a road string in my world is 86. 86 table road strings, that's mean your road string have three section of the road. In the top, it's one inches, in the bottom is three quarter, and between both of them, it's seven over eight. Let me give you also one example, you know. For this, as example, if I said I have my API road string 65, 65 that's mean I have two table road string, six and five, three quarter and five over eight of inches. 88, what's mean? I have the road string from top to the bottom, all is one size, one inch, but I must have two digits, because every I define with two digits. 97, that's mean. My 97 table ABI road string. I have nine, it's one over eight, I have one inches, I have seven, eight, then I have three table road string. Then the table road string, it's used just to reduce the weight of the road string itself. Nothing else is uh, it's required. If reducing the weight of the road string, uh, you can also reduce the weight on the bumping units. Reducing the weight on the bumping, service bumping units, you can use smaller bumping units. Reducing the weight on the bumping units also can reduce the weight on the, or just the load and the motor. Then you can reduce the power consumption. 
a lot of function of our using table road string. Then for the table road string, again, in order to, to be ABI, the road string distribution along its, its length, you know, should have equal stresses at each top of each table road strings. Second road in the downstroke, it's only lifting its own weight. There is no weight in the downstroke of second road. And especially for the lower part of second road, will be no weights on, on the lower part. And the weights can be have a tendency of paddling. Nothing will pull the weight from the bottom and will go, will move against the plungers. Then the plunger is moving against the road itself. Then the lower part of the tubing can be impacted. For that reason, you know, the manufacturing or just the design, uh, the designer is okay. Sometimes if I have a buckling and the buckling tendency, buckling can create a big problem in the, in the lower part of the, of the tubing. Can create a friction between road and tubing, coupling and tubing and so on. Then using what you call only heavy parts of the roads. For example, if you can use a road with one and a half inches, two inches and so on. This is the sinker part, the heavy part, or just the heavy weights of the road string. It's used just in the lower part on the tubing just to concentrate it all the weight to above the bump to help the road string to be always under tension. The road string will be under tension in the upstroke. But what in the downstroke? The road string will not be under tension. Then the, the sinker bar is required to provide concentration weights on the road string, in the bottom of the road string. Why? In order to keep the road string will be under tension on the downstroke, not in the upstroke. Assist the bump and the second road string to have full easy, you know, because, you know, in, in, in heavy crude oil, there is a bouncy effect. There is a frictions, you know, just a, a, what's called viscosity frictions between the road and the cabling, and the road can move very slow in the road. We need some heavy weights on the road to let the road to go move faster in the road string and the flow and so on. The third part is if we start to come to the service equipment, it's the beam pumping unit, or just the, 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 the surface pumping unit and so on. In the past, there is only one type of pumping units. This type, all of you just maybe, if you want to the PT can count, the majority of the people use what you call beam pumping units or bump jack and so on. The main function of this pump, it's used to stroke the bottom wall pump up and down, you know. And usually it's reducing the speed of the prime movers to the required speed to activate it, the down hole bump and converted the rotary motion of the prime mover to just the reciprocating up and down motion. Plus it's carry all the weight of the well in the flow. Currently really you know, because the, the, the producer, the operator found a lot of problem using this well for high volume. For high volumes, there is a limited limitation in the bumping speed. And when you're increasing the bumping speeds, a lot of problem downhole, it will be created, you know, like uh, uh, the velocity will be increased, uh, the buckling will be increased, you know, the friction will be increased, uh, the, 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 the load and downstroke will be decreased, uh, and so on. Then the manufacturing starts to, to manufacturing what you call long stroke bumping unit. There's a limited in a stroke of bumping unit, this, this can be reached to 240, sometimes a special design 260 inches. And this is a function of the production. What if you want more production? The manufacturing start to produce what we call longer stroke pumping units. This can be used to produce high volume, can to reduce the speed, and to, if you want to produce the same volume. This, uh, for the long stroke pumping units, there is a mechanical type and there is a hydraulics type fully automated bumping units and so on. Also, ABI configured and designated the pumping units, the beam pumping units, this type of pumping unit with a special configuration, a special design. They said, okay, for the pumping, what size of pumping units I need? For example, this one. If you go to the field, we found different size, different shape, different con configuration of pump size. What 
only units need to use um, in this case. You said, okay, first letters is give you what type of bond. In the market, there is different type of bond, but the majority of people, conventional type of bond, like this one. This one is a conventional type of bombing units. But in the market, there is no type. Then the, the letter C gives you what's the configuration, what's the type of bombing units you have. Then you say, okay, this bombing unit is rotating, uh, it's just converting the rotary motion of prime mover to reciprocating motion and reduce the speed. Then it's required a gear reducer. Gear, gear reducer just to lift the float meanwhile to rotating the bombing unit. Then it's required a certain torque. You say, okay, for each bombing unit, you need to define what the maximum peak torque, maximum torque in thousand these units can be rotating, uh, the, 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 the rotating the system and going up and down. Usually take this number and multiply by 1,000. Then the peak torque here is around 640,000 inch pound. D is just this gear reducer is mean is reducing the speed over two, two steps and two directions. Plus, this bombing unit is lifting, carrying the weight of the fluid plus the weight of the road. But for sure, there is a maximum capacity for each unit. Then he just gives you a number like this. If multiply this with 100, he says this bombing unit is a maximum load on the polished road because the polished road is the top part of the road string at the top. Then the peak polished road loads a maximum load. This unit can be left 25,600 pound. What is the maximum stroke loads going up and down? Maximum stroke length for this unit is 145 inches. <coughs> if you look to these are conventional bombing units, if you are defined by, for an example, C912, D365, 168. What does this mean? C, this means this configuration. This bomb looks like, like this one. It's, it's just, you know, a configuration. 912, that means if you multiply this with 1000, this gear reducer, can rotate this with the torque because the torque is a function of the load and the distance, you know, how far you, are, you have this distance from here to here. Then what maximum torque you can, you, you can lift, this, you can rotate in this one. Plus, you know, the peak load, how much load, this is six, three, six, five, then three, three, six, five, 365,000 pounds, how, big loads we can lift it from here. Plus how much the maximum stroke lanes you can lift it and so. Let us go to the prime mover for that. All this is introduction, we can go on details after that. We said the prime mover is the last end of the system. It's just the tool or the machine is required to provide the rotary motion to the bonding unit, which is converted through the gear reducers to a reciprocating motions, gear reducer and the bombing units and reducing the speed here. This is, can be engine, like this one. The engine can be diesel engine, gas engine, or can be electric motor, like this one. For sure, there is a different type of operation. What's the second road wheel heads look like? Second road, this is a polished road, huh? remember this is a polished road. This is a polished road going up and down. This is a bombing unit. For all road lift system, you need to have a POP because in case you have a problem here, you need to close this POP in order to have any repairs here. Plus you need to have a stuffing box. Stuffing box is just like a piece of equipment, have a rubber inside. This rubber is closed over this polished road. It allows the polished road to go up and down without to allow the flow to go out in the well. And so this is just in a very simple way in, in, in that. How we analyzing and we know the system is running and so on. One of the main famous, uh, just uh, uh, piece of information is required from that, what we call the dynamometers. Dynamometers, it's just gives you the performance of the downhole bounce and surface bounce. What is dynamometers? Dynamometers, it's just, you know, a, a, a relations between the loads in the vertical uh, uh, axis and the position in the horizontal axis. What mean of the load? Load, while we are going up, 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 and up stroke, 
you are lifting fluid, then the load will be increased. Then going up from here, the load will be increasing until we reach to the bottom of, of uh, the, uh, the end of the turbine slope. Then while we are going down, the load will be decreased until we are reaching the end. This will be called. We have two types of cards, service card and downhole cards. Really, this is dynamometer card analysis and survey required more than three sessions, two sessions to go in detail and analysis. But however, you know, this one of the pieces of information is required for all bombing units. You can do just, this is using a portable dynamometer or we can do continuous. This is what we call some equipment tool installed at the well site called well managers, which can measure continuously the load with uh, the position and we can measure the surface load and the downhole load can give you the performance of the surface equipment and down or equipment. Okay, there's different shape and parameters of downhole equipment from each shape. We can know how the bump is running. Is the bump is running in with a very good efficiency? If the bump is running with a 50% efficiency? If there is a sand inside the bump? If there is a weir inside the bump? If there is one above standing dropping valve have problem? If there is some stuck inside the bump? From all that, we can know how the bump is running. And so um, this is just an introduction, very light introduction about road lift system because road lift system is required minimum one month daily session, at least like this. It's, it's a system using worldwide more than 75% with, with new technology and, and, and start more, more and more ways as used. Thanks, and uh, if you have any questions, it's... Uh, yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Mohammed, for the session. Uh, and I have some questions from the students. Okay. Uh, okay, the first one. Do we use multiple tubing catchers uh, like centralizers in the no. road pump? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. No, tubing catcher, only one tubing catcher, because tubing catcher is used at the bottom of the tubing, either below or above the bump and we are connecting the tubing to the casing and connecting to the tubing in the casing in the tension and while we are moving up or down then the tubing is not moving only one tubing and culture is required different type of tubing and culture in the market can be mechanical can be hydraulics uh, and so on. but no we are using only one tubing and culture okay. it's not a centralizer yes okay the the second question, when we can use top and bottom anchor the pump? Yes, I mentioned like that, you know, while I, I just in, in very quick. Bottom uh, anchor pumps I can use for depots when the delta B will be a very high uh, across the parallels, you know, and the bottom hole pressure will be a very low, then I use bottom anchor pump. Or if I need high protections uh, from the well while the insert pump cannot be uh, sorry, the, the top anchor bump cannot be used. Top anchor bump I use if there is a sand, if there is debris on the wells, you know. I use the top anchor bump. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Mohammed, do you hear me? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, the third question, question um, how do how is the stresses um, distributed along the continuous uh, road? In the, in, the, in the continuous road pump? Yes, good questions. You know, yes, the, 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 um, the stress is, is distributed based on the load. The continuous roads in the top part of the continuous road is lifting also the lower part of the, of the road. Then the top part of the continuous road have the highest stress uh, on that one. For that reason, currently, when we start to design a continuous road for devils, Sometimes we use also a tapered continuous roads. Tapered continuous roads, we are welding the road to the seats. Or just sometimes we came from the factory, from the plant, it's welded together, you know. But yes, this is a uh, top bar, it uh, will be a very high stresses on the top bar of the continuous road. And this is one of the main important problem for the continuous road when we design. When we design this, we will try to distribute it the stress is very carefully over the continuous road. Mm, okay. Uh, the last question I have, uh, does the second road used in the offshore uh, plat offshore uh, 
kids. Yeah. Do you, do you see this picture? Yeah, we can see it. This is offshore, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes. This, this is actually, but however, 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 you know, this is just, you know, a very special application. It's not an easy to use an offshore because offshore platform is limited as a size, area, and as a weight. But, you know, this is a very small unit and, you know, it's, it's very limited. However, you know, currently, you know, uh, with, with a new uh, manufacturing for uh, what you call uh, hydraulic bombing unit like uh, the one I, I mentioned, I show you before, the hydraulic bomb, you're gonna try it one, long stroke, this one, you know, it can be used even, but with a very lim limited applications. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Mohammed, for the session. Uh, it's very inf informative. Uh, and I want to thank all of our students for being with us today. Um, and uh, have a good day, all of you. <laughs>